bad crash here at Talladega. Just a very, very bad crash. Mark Martin is involved. So is Rusty Wallace, Brett Bodine, Elton Sawyer. One car overturned in the banking of turn number one, got up into the catch fence and came back onto the racetrack. I don't know who it was at the moment, but this is a very, very ugly looking crash. Boy, it just, once it went into that turn, once it started, Bob, it, there's Ricky Rudd. He was involved. You see a lot of damage to his cars. The cars were running so close together. And uh, once this thing started, I mean, it was just everybody getting involved. Derek Cope, as you say, he was involved. He's trying to get his car back around. Here it is again. Take a look. It's going to happen up front with uh, Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin running side by side. Okay, Martin goes a little high there. Gordon gets into him. They both have to back off, and then the jamming up starts. And they get into the wall on the outside. Others start jockeying around. There's Derek Cope. He thought he got through that for just a moment, but Mark Martin's going to come right back up in front of him. And is that Ricky Craven? Yes, it is. Ricky Craven in car number 41 that's flipping over, went up against the outside wheel fence back down on the track and was hit again. Yeah, he got hit again as the car was rolling toward the apron of the racetrack. So Ricky Craven is certainly one that we have a great deal of concern about. Jeff Gordon is okay. He's climbed out of his car. Although it's damaged very badly, but boy, Ricky Craven really took a horrible, horrible ride. Very reminiscent of Phil Parsons' crash a few years ago. Yes, man. it was. Okay, here they are. Gordon trying to go on the outside of Mark Martin. They make a little contact and it sort of shoots Martin out into the wall. Then Gordon comes up, gets tagged and spins around. And Ricky Craven, right in the middle of him, his car gets airborne. You can see it flipping up to the outside wall, just coming apart, and then is hit down on the inside by Elton Sawyer. It looks like the car number 27. Ricky Craven may be out of the car. We'll confirm that in a moment. Here it is from Mark Martin's car. Okay, Mark just riding along. Everything looking great as Terry Labonte goes by on the outside, and Mark starts to move up here, not realizing that Jeff Gordon is coming up on the outside of him. And then he gets into the wall, slams down onto the inside, and boy, it breaks loose. He made pretty heavy contact with Ward Burton. Let's look at it again. You see just how fast it happens. Man. Tony Irvin was involved. And within a matter of five or six seconds, the whole thing can uh, unfold. There, they're removing some of the debris and throwing it over the uh, crack. After starting 40th on the field, he takes the lead midway through the race. But then, running fourth on lap 103, Gordon gets caught up in this accident with a host of other drivers, including Todd Bodine, Greg Sachs, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Burton, and Mark Martin, who goes for a wild ride. Believe it or not, Mark is just fine. Only one lap later in turn five, a spectacular crash involving Derek Cope and West Coast driver John Krebs. Krebs gets airborne and flips, but the safety equipment does its job as both drivers walk away. Meantime, no Monster Mile can be ferocious. Jeff Burton knows he cuts a tire and takes a hard lick from both retaining walls. This is a testament, though, to the safety of these cars. After all of that, Jeff Burton has not a scratch on him. With Mark Martin cruising in the lead, he falls to the same fate in almost the identical spot. Five more laps, and Martin would have had the win. Rusty Wallace inherits the lead. Fishfinder 500K on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. Things have settled down, but only marginally. Up front, Jeff Purvis. At the front, five-car draft. They're trying to break away. Everybody else is trying to find a place in line. And big trouble in the air. Goes Mark Martin on his roof. No, that Ward is Burton. not. It is Ward Burton. Excuse me. Jim Bown is in the wall. Phil Parsons has spun. Tommy Houston spins. 
And it's a tremendous slide down the front They're still straightaway. Wrecking, Mike. They're still wrecking down there in turn one. Rodney Combs and three other cars have crashed to turn one to end this one. Yeah, that was Ford Burton that got upside yes. down. Uh, the one good thing, the car did stay on the roof and it went down through there. It didn't start flopping around a whole bunch. Yeah, the good thing is, is the new pavement they've done right here that's Excuse really me, helped. Darryl, he's taking the net down and coming out right now. All right. What a slide for Ward Burton. Well, you see where the car is, Mike? That used to be grass. If that was still right. grass, that car would have went flipping. But because it's asphalt, they just slid and came to a halt. They're up with uh, working with Stevie Reeves up there at the outside wall, dropping the window net to get Stevie out. See Jason Keller, the front end of his car. He's run into something. A grinding crash here on the 11th lap. Ward Burton is okay. It looks like Ward just got loose in the trouble here. And that, uh, I believe, is Phil Parsons yeah, it's walking good. back. He is okay. Well, that's one of the first times I've ever seen the roof flap not keep the cars down, but it was on the flat part of the racetrack where it left it. Let's show you what happened here. You look back in there, you oh, I see what happened. He got a tap. Ward got hit by uh, Johnny Benson, I think it is. And uh, that's see the he, flat part of the racetrack when he made to come back up on the racetrack, it flipped right up. The nice part of this, the car stayed on the roof. It did not start tumbling. Right. And everybody scatters. Rodney Combs got in it there. You see the 43. Yeah, it's just hard to take the evasive out. You never know which way to go. You don't know to go low. You don't know to go high. You can't hit the brakes. If you do, no. you crash. And the other thing, you see all that smoke. Well, you, that looks bad there, but down on the racetrack, it's blinding. You yeah. cannot see through that smoke. Here's another, another look. You'll see the initial contact here. The one with cat on it just gets tapped right there. Now, the important point, if we can stop right there, right there, when he goes to the flat, see, the roof flaps are up, and they're trying to do their job. But he's gone to that sharp angle between the racetrack and the apron, and right. that's what allows air to get under the car. Right, it's that transition of the racetrack. Oof. Well, I know that looks terrible, but that was a good break that the car didn't start flipping over and over. All right, we'll, have, uh, we'll take the damage report. And fill you in on who else has been involved in this incident. And what like, and no, oh, against the wall. That looks like uh, Mark Lundell. Oh, he looks like he's okay, but he's uh, he's moving in the car. Mark Lundell, a stream of smoke. I don't know if it was because the engine went or because he was already losing it. Hard against the wall, but he climbs out immediately, and of course the yellow comes out. So we're in our second yellow. Oh yeah. Oh, his motor was definitely going. Somebody was very lucky there. That looked almost. Oh, like, ooh. oh that's that, a lucky impact. That's a lucky impact for him to walk away. And I'll tell you who else was lucky. Was it looked like his well, teammate? Well, maybe not so lucky. Let's hope he's okay. He's down on the ground. And that's the, of course, the IndyCar safety team. Dr. Steve Alvey was the man over him. Look at him pass right behind his teammate tucks his nose under his wing. Not a good angle to hit the wall. Car does what it's supposed to, though. That disintegration is good. That's energy leaving the car. So as the car hugs the wall, this is at regular speed. Watch that car. Boy, oh boy, well, I'm oh boy. You, I'm, I'm sitting up here and haven't been in that position before. That really hurts. That yep. really hurts. Be very careful about uh, Mark Blundell's condition now. He climbed out of the car under his own power, but seemed to collapse by the edge of the track. Safety crews keeping him there. You notice how they position the vehicle, too, to protect uh, the work they're doing from uh, any of the other cars should anything else happen. He's definitely got a problem there. Something definitely goes wrong. It might have been that smoke we saw coming out of the back of the car, but 